the Oklahoma Newsroom, it's time for the Red Zone, our extended weekly look at Oklahoma football. I'm Jenny Carlson here in studio with fellow columnist Barry Trammell and OU beat writer Ryan Aber. Guys, it's an off week for the Sooners, no game on Saturday, but it has been anything but quiet this week. Obviously, uh, Sunday, day after the loss to Texas in the Red River rivalry, Lincoln Riley pulls the trigger on Mike Stoops, firing the longtime defensive coordinator at uh, OU, Ryan, uh, we've talked about the surprise, we've talked about all of that. Now the focus becomes what can change, what will change. Ruffin McNeil taking over that spot, Bob Diaco moving into a full-time uh, assistance position at the uh, linebacker uh, spot. Let's talk about what can change. What do you feel like is at the top of the list when it comes to things that can change with these, with these coaching changes? Well, after talking to uh, a couple of the players who played for Ruffin McNeil at Texas Tech in 2007 when he took over in a similar situation after four games, not a whole lot structurally changed. The only thing they did is they got more aggressive with their defensive linemen. Ruffin McNeil's been a defensive line coach for quite a while. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if guys like, uh, you know, Kenneth Mann, Neville Gallimore, Amani Bledsoe, if those guys are asked to do more. So much of Oklahoma's defensive strategy recently has been for the defensive linemen just to keep the linebackers clean, keep things free for Curtis Bolton, Kenneth Murray, uh, those type of guys to make plays. Uh, could be the defensive linemen doing a little bit more moving forward. Barry, in your estimation, what, what should change? I asked Ryan what could change, and aggressiveness may be at the top of that list, but what in your mind should change with these, with these coaching changes? I've got no clue. <laughs> I don't have any ideas. I mean, that, these guys we're talking about know a lot more about it than me. I mean, mm -hmm. you want to you want to be more aggressive. You want to blitz more. Well, okay, they blitzed a lot. Those cornerbacks have been burned. You want to play back. You know, they they can't uh, they can't uh, tackle guys on the slant. You want to you want to uh, try to take away the run game. They they can't stop uh, the, the quarterback load against Texas. So, I don't know what's going on. Um, you know, I do think that maybe uh, uh, if, if your older guys aren't getting it done, play some younger guys. See what, see what you might find in the, in, the, uh, in the pile of players who aren't playing. And, uh, you know, let's talk about Levi Draper maybe playing more, uh, linebacker uh, from Oklahoma. So, um, you know, they're already playing some young guys in the secondary, I and mean, it's not like you got a bunch of veterans back there. So um, there's not a lot of options here. The one thing you can sort of hope for and count on is that Mike Stoops' voice had gotten a little stale to this team. Uh, maybe some guys had tuned him out. Maybe some guys were trying to listen and it didn't resonate. Maybe a new, maybe a new voice can work. That's what Lincoln Riley said. You know, sometimes you just need a new voice. Sometimes it can't hurt. We, sh we shall see. It's not a question of just not knowing defense. That's not the problem. But something was getting lost in translation or these guys just can't just can't play defense. Ryan, we'll we'll ask you about any structural changes or personnel moves in a second, but talk a little bit to that point Barry just made about a new voice and sort of being able to maybe have a connection that, you know, it was maybe it wasn't the Mike Super done anything wrong, but maybe it was just hitting on deaf ears. I don't know. Buki Radley Hiles with the tweet uh, earlier this week that indicated that you know, it was just not a good relationship. Maybe the relationship between Stoops and the defenders was fractured. Um, what's your sense of, of just that, sort of that, uh, that, that fresh start for the defense? Well, it seems like Ruffin McNeil is, is what you want when you've got uh, some of that fracturing and, and guys tuning out uh, Mike Stoops. Like Barry said, Mike Stoops knows defense. I mean, he had, uh, what was it, uh, top five defenses uh, 2001, 2, 3, I think they were top 10 in their national championship season. So they, he knows how to coach really good defense, but uh, the, the voice had, had been lost on those guys. Ruffin McNeil is a guy who is a motivator, first and foremost. He said, uh, you know, I, I yell, I scream, I'm going get, to get after them when they need to be getting after, but at the same time, I'm going to, you know, coach them hard and love them harder uh, is what he said. And I, I think maybe that's something that needs to happen with this group just to get the most out of them. This isn't the most talented defense. They're not going to be a top 10 defense moving forward. But if they can be better, if they can be a top 50 defense, 
then Oklahoma has a chance at doing something this year. Well, and I, I know a lot of former players that played under Mike Stoops would say, hey, nobody loved me more than Mike Stoops. So, again, I think there was just, you know, the, the, the voice, like you said, Ryan, yeah. it was just, it wasn't really being, it was out there, but it wasn't being heard by a lot of these guys, it sounds like. Yeah, no doubt about it. Sometimes, you know, coaching voices just get stale and, and players, you know, even if it's not consciously, start to tune it out and, yeah. and not do or not work hard, as hard as they need to be or not uh, pay attention as much as they need to be. And sometimes it just needs uh, need a fresh start. And I think Mike Stoops needed that fresh start, and certainly Oklahoma's defense did. Well, and bless you, Barry. Uh, the, the fact was, as, as we've talked about Mike Stoops and his defensive knowledge, if you look back at that Texas game, Barry, there were guys in position to make plays, and they didn't make plays. That, to me, says that Mike Stoops was coaching a defense that knew what to do, but then ultimately didn't do it. Sort of speaks to what we're, we're talking about here with maybe just the fresh start in and of itself is, is what was necessary here. Well, I mean, if you want to get real technical, I mean, if five Sooners, pick any five you want that were on the field, there were a whole bunch of them, if five Sooners could drag down a, a tall wide receiver on two slant plays rather than letting him run, uh, you know, 10 yards extra, well, he probably wins the game. I mean, they, they give up the, the, the crossing pattern to back the tight end on a third and 19, give him 18 yards, let Colin, uh, no, uh, Lil Jordan Humphrey, I think, yeah. go 17 yards on third and 19 after he caught a seven yard pass. If they stop those two deep plays and make Texas punt, they probably win the game. Mike Stoops is probably still employed. Yeah. I mean, it's just madness what they allowed Texas to do. And um, it, when, when you saw little Jordan hum Humphrey, just, you know, he's a, he's a very good athlete, big, tall, strapping guy. He's not Earl Campbell. <laughs> Somebody take him down. He just literally just the whole pack of Sooners yeah. it shirts. Was, it was incredible watching that. It was nuts. <laughs> it was like a cartoon or something. Yeah. So, you know, it, a lot of this is just some of its mentality, some of its physicality. Some of it's coaching, and some of it's just the Sooners don't have enough good players. I mean, we were talking earlier. Who's, who's the best defender on this team? They really don't I have enough. Uh, probably their best defender this season so far has been Curtis Bolton, who wasn't even on the field much uh, before this year. Right. And I think that speaks more to some of their problems elsewhere rather than – obviously, Bolton's had a great year, but still. They've yeah. got to upgrade the talent. They just, they just got to do that. They could have Bill Belichick coaching their defense. It's not going to help if you don't upgrade that talent. Well, considering the talent they do have right now, Ryan, I want to get back to that question of any maneuvers that might, you know, further infuse some life into the defense. Anything you think they could maybe be looking at as far as, you know, players maybe starting or, or, or becoming reserves that weren't or moving positions? What's your sense of that right now? Well, Barry mentioned Levi Draper, and certainly he's a guy who has a chance to, to get on the field uh, on the defensive side, period. He's been a special teams guy a little bit, hadn't played much uh, defensively. Maybe he's a guy who gets, uh, gets some looks. But I think the one that uh, I'm really looking toward to play more is Trey Brown. Just we've seen him uh, make plays when he's been on the field. Now, there's been a couple times where he's been burned. He's missed a, missed a couple tackles. He missed one, a big one on Saturday. But uh, still, it seems like Trey Brown it can be a playmaker back there. He's still a young guy, uh, needs to grow some, but uh, maybe he's a guy who finds his way on the field a little bit more. So if we're saying that there's a lot still yet to be determined about what this is going to look like moving forward, I think that's safe to say. I guess maybe the bigger picture question is what happens in the offseason? I mean, I think, I think most of us sitting here would agree that Ruffin McNeil is probably not the long-term uh, defensive coordinator. So, Barry, what's, the, what's your best guess about what Lincoln Riley does once we get to the end of the season in terms of, you know, defensive coordinator? What's he looking for? Who's he going after? Are other guys on the defensive side of the ball being shown the door like Mike Stoops? What's sort of happening once the offseason hits? Well, I think – I think Mike Stoops is likely to not be the only staff member who's out at the end of the year. If for no other reason than whoever Lincoln brings in, you generally want to bring in at least one fellow assistant with you to sort of help you formulate your new plan. Um, my best guess is that Lincoln goes young. Um, you know, some people mention people like Gene Chizik, who's a longtime established defensive coordinator and has had great success, but he's, you know, he's an older guy. 
So um, I think Lincoln is looking for a defensive Lincoln Riley. Mm -hmm. I think that's what he'll look for. Not just a guy that's sharp on defense and relates to the players, but also a guy that's adept at the social media game. Lincoln has put a huge emphasis on recruiting in his what a, you know 16 months as head coach. So I think that'll be something he looks at. You know, Mike Stoops a little bit like me. Uh, <laughs> the, the social media aspect of the game doesn't just uh, confuse him; it frustrates him. At times, it angers me. I assume it angers Mike. So, you know, a guy who's a little bit more of a wizard at that kind of thing, as well as a wizard at tackling Little Joy and Humphrey, I think is probably what Lincoln's looking for. Well, which is why that uh, one of the first names that pops out to me is Jerry Montgomery, a guy who was on this staff uh, just a few years ago. Uh, left to, to go to the NFL to be an assistant D-line coach for the Green Bay Packers. Briefly left there, eventually was elevated to defensive line coach this year uh, for the Packers. He's a guy who recruited, uh, recruited like crazy for the Sooners. They elevated him to co-defensive coordinator very briefly right before he left. Uh, he's a guy who could get a look as one of those young up-and-coming coaches who has a chance to uh, break through on the recruiting front like Barry mentioned but also uh, got a lot of positive reviews for his on-the-field coaching. Okay, lots of questions left to be determined, guys. If you're, last question, if you're Ruffin McNeil and you've got this off week before you play again, you're suddenly the defensive coordinator at Oklahoma. Uh, I asked this question because when Ruffin McNeil talked to the media the other day, he talked about his first priority about seven different ways, that his first priority was to get the players on the same page. Well, no, it's about the coaches. I mean, there was about a million first priorities, Ryan. So talk to me, if you're Ruffin McNeil, what are you doing right now behind the scenes as you look at this off week and trying to get things going? Well, beyond the just the, the mental aspect of everything that we've talked about, I think it's just work on tackling and get better at bringing guys down. Barry talked about that, the struggles that they had on, on those two critical third and longs. It's figuring out a way to get that better, and, and there's no better time than during an off week to really emphasize that, really focus on it. Ruffin McNeil said there have been some extra uh, defensive units in practice to try to, to bring that along. So we'll see what kind of difference that makes here in uh, a little bit more than a week at TCU. But that, to me, is probably priority number one on that side of the ball. Barry, put yourself in Ruffin McNeil's shoes. What are you doing in this off week and, and as you get ready for, as Ryan said, TCU next week? You know what I think he's trying to do? I think he's trying to rebuild the psyche. I think he's probably trying to just work on the mental game, trying to build up these guys' confidence. You know, that one thing the players mentioned the other day was uh, McNeil's propensity to, to urge them to celebrate success. Mm. Um, you know, whether it's a you know, a, a, certainly a turnover, but a, a big tackle or, or, or a stop or whatever, you know, celebrate, even in practice, celebrate it with each other. I think he's working on their mental frame of mind because that was a, that was a mentally uh, browbeat uh, in, in the Cotton Bowl on Saturday. That's a Texas offense that is just so-so. Ten offensive points against Kansas State, and they go up and down the field on the Sooners. And I think he's got a lot of work to do just trying to build that confidence back. And I think he knows that. I think that's what he's really spending his time on. Sooners are lucky. TCU's next. TCU's got a, a, an offense that's not very good. It's not near as productive as Texas has been, much less somebody like West Virginia or Tech. So I think uh, the Sooners have a chance to, uh, to have a good game or at least hold TCU down a week from Saturday and uh, you know, start building back that confidence a little bit. And let's also remember they've still got an offense that's really, really good. So we'll see how it all. This game has an offensive side. <laughs> I know, I know. This week it doesn't seem like it, but they still have Kyler Murray and Lincoln Riley running the show over there. So we'll see how that all comes together. Again, off Saturday for the Sooners as they prepare for TCU in a week. And we'll continue to have coverage of the changes at Oklahoma and that game against TCU. So be sure to stay with the best coverage team anywhere at newsok.com and every day in the Oklahoma.